My in-laws were drunk at the wedding, but they didn't care. Even though people were whispering about them, they started yelling at me. It's too late now that you're married, but if you want to be part of this family, you need to show us you have enough money, they said. Yes, your dad is right, so make sure to give us $1,000 a month as a new bonus, they added. I was shocked by their demands. I couldn't believe they would say such things at my wedding reception. I just stared at them, feeling my face go pale. My dad took the microphone from them. Enough is enough. Don't you realize you're embarrassing yourselves? He said, My name is Linda. I am a 30-year-old office worker. I am currently dating Larry, who is 32 years old. I met him through a friend who was worried about me being single, so she introduced us. After dating for a year, Larry proposed, and now we are about to get married. I lost my mother when I was very young, and my father raised me on his own. He worked very hard to take care of me. I didn't have many worries growing up, but losing my mom, who I love so much, deeply hurt me. Because of this, I was very careful with my emotions. That's why I hadn't dated anyone seriously since my school days. I even thought it would be okay if I stayed single forever. Then I met Larry. At first, I didn't feel any romantic feelings for him, even though he asked me out many times. Larry really cared about me and was always a gentleman. Slowly, I began to open my heart to him, and we started dating. He kept caring for me, and I felt very happy. He became very special to me, and I started thinking I wanted to be with him forever. Then he proposed, and we decided to get married. Larry understood everything about me and was always kind to me, no matter what. Don't worry if you're ever feeling unsure about something. I'll be here for you until you feel better. I love you, Linda. You can count on me, he would say. His words moved me. He promised to make me happy for the rest of my life. Just being with him warmed my heart. If he cared that much for me, I thought I should do the same for him. When I told my father that we decided to get married, he was so happy that he cried. Wow, Linda, you're finally getting married. I'm so happy for you, he said. Oh, Dad, you're being dramatic, I joked. Wow, I hadn't heard anything like that from you until now. I was always worried that you might never get married, he replied. Oh, really? I had no idea you were worried about that. I said, well, every father worries about his daughter, you know. Anyway, congratulations, he said. Thanks, Dad, I replied. I was so happy to be congratulated by my dad, who had raised me by himself. I thought I would probably cry at the wedding, and my dad would probably cry even more since he was already crying. Now with that, Larry and I started preparing for our big day. We were both busy with our jobs, so our days were very hectic. We worked during the weekdays and made wedding preparations over the weekends. There was no time to rest. Our calendars were always full. On a rare day off, we were supposed to visit Larry's parents' house. I was going to meet Larry's parents for the first time. Larry had come over to meet my father right after he proposed to me. Originally, I had planned to visit Larry's parents right after that to introduce myself, but they were very busy, and our schedules never matched. Finally, some time passed, and we managed to arrange a visit. As we arrived at his parents' house, I suddenly felt nervous. Don't worry, my parents are very kind, Larry reassured me. His words made me feel a bit better, and I rang the doorbell. It was his mother who opened the door. Mom, I'm home, Larry said. Welcome home, Larry. It's so good of you to come, his mother replied warmly. As she talked with her son, I greeted her as politely as I could. Nice to meet you. My name is Linda, and I'm Larry's fiancé, I said. I see you're Linda, she said. Her voice was much lower than when she spoke to Larry and her smile vanished. 
She looked me up and down as if judging me. Then she led us to the living room, where her cold attitude didn't change. Linda, I'm curious about what you bring to the table. Larry is our treasure and our only child. If you're going to marry him, you need to be a suitable wife. Are you worthy of him? She asked, more like an interrogation. I was taken aback by her question. I hadn't expected such a cold attitude from my future mother-in-law and was at a loss for words. You're going to join our family, you know. Are you ready for that? She continued. True, marrying Larry meant joining his family. But it's not like Larry's family were the Kennedys or some well-known high society family. It's not like I was marrying into a royal family. Why was I being asked to make such a commitment? Besides, I wasn't even going to live with them. I don't like being pressured with questions like these. As I was trying to figure out how to respond, his mother seemed impatient with my slow reply and scolded me harshly. When I ask you a question, answer me right away. You're so rude, she snapped. I'm asking if you're ready for this, she continued, raising her voice. Despite feeling overwhelmed, I managed to say, I hope that Larry and I will support each other in our marriage. When I said that, his mother was not convinced. What a naive thing to say. You aren't just going to support each other. You are supposed to support Larry. It's your job as a wife to support your husband. You don't even understand the basics, she criticized. Then Larry's father, who was sitting next to her, intervened. Honey, calm down. Sorry about that, Linda. You must have been startled by my wife's words, he said, trying to ease the tension. It's all right, I replied, trying to remain calm. His mother is very protective of her only son. Maybe she was just nervous and spoke without thinking. Just then, Larry's brother walked in. He spoke in a quiet, calm, and gentle tone. He seemed like a kind man, which gave me a moment of relief. But that relief was short-lived. With a smile on his face, he said the most unexpected thing. What my wife says is actually justified. What concerns me the most is that you come from a single-parent family, he said. What do you mean by that? I asked, confused. Well, being raised by just one parent doesn't have a good public image. We can't be too happy to have such a person become the wife of our only son, can we? He explained. Hold on a minute, I said, unable to let this comment slide. What is wrong with being raised by a single parent? My father worked very hard to raise me by himself. I am very thankful for my upbringing, and I am proud of my father. Being raised by a single parent doesn't make me any less valuable. But they still argued. Since you were missing one parent, you couldn't have learned how to be a good wife, do housework and such, I responded. I did a lot of housework to help my father. I can also cook pretty well, so please don't say that. Despite my response, Larry's mother ignored what I said and finally stated, I will allow you to marry Larry, but in exchange, you must promise to devote everything to us because we are Larry's parents. Can you promise me that? I was shocked. What? Since you came here to ask for our permission to marry our son, you do know what your duties are, don't you? Before I could say more, he continued the conversation. I found that my in-laws had completely taken over the conversation, giving me little chance to respond. That night, as I thought more about the marriage, I decided to share my feelings with Larry. Do your parents always talk to people like that? I asked. Larry seemed unfazed. I was surprised that Larry didn't see anything wrong with what his parents had said to me. Well, I mean, the way your parents spoke to me and what they said, I tried to explain. Oh, really? Well, they were just talking about whether you were ready for this marriage. I get that your parents are worried about their son's marriage, but I feel like what your parents were saying was a bit too much, I replied. Why is that? 
My parents didn't say anything wrong. Besides, they've given us permission to get married, so don't worry about it, Larry said. But I felt uneasy that Larry seemed to side with his parents more than with me. That was very troubling. I guess he realized I was feeling unsure because he gave me a hug. Linda, you don't have to worry so much. My parents are just a bit upset because their only son is getting married, he said. He spoke as if he didn't fully support me. It's all going to be fine. Don't overthink it. I'm sure they just want what's best for us. They want us to be as good of a couple as they are. That's why they were a bit harsh, he added. Oh, really? I replied, maybe his parents have high expectations for us. But even if that's the case, I don't think it's right for them to belittle me because I was raised by my father. I don't think people who say such things make a good couple. We are the ones getting married, and we should be the focus, not the approval or disapproval. With that perspective, although I was still a bit upset, I decided not to dwell too much on his parents' opinions. Then the day of the wedding arrived. We had many guests, including our relatives, friends, colleagues, and bosses. I walked down the aisle with my father, who had raised me all my life. Larry and I exchanged our vows and rings. We were met with applause, and for the first time, I truly realized that I was getting married to Larry. I felt the happiness I had never felt before. As we walked into the reception hall, we made our way through the crowd, greeted by videos of us as part of the entertainment. It was a joyful time. I chatted with friends I hadn't seen in a while, and many people congratulated us, despite my earlier worries about his parents. I was glad I had decided to marry Larry. I was glad we decided to have a memorable day after the ceremony. We planned to officially register our marriage, and Larry and I would become husband and wife. I cherished every moment and felt so happy. Time flew by, and soon it was time for the final part of the event. The bridegroom and both sets of parents lined up to greet the guests. But I started to feel uneasy because of Larry's parents. We were all supposed to be standing in line, but his parents were wobbly on their feet. If you looked closely, you could see that their faces were bright red. They had drunk too much. Some relatives asked if they were okay. My in-laws were clearly drunk, but we had to wrap up the ceremony and get it over with. The moderator handed the microphone to me and Larry. Suddenly, Larry's mother snatched my hand away from him and yelled at me like a professional wrestler in the middle of a challenge. Listen to me, Linda. After this wedding, you're going to devote yourself to us completely. Prepare yourself because we are going to test you really hard. The guests started whispering to each other, and some even thought it was a joke and laughed. Then Larry's father grabbed the microphone. Linda, don't you feel embarrassed to wear a dress like that? It doesn't suit you at all, dear. You should tell her the truth, his mother chimed in as expected. The whispers among the guests changed in tone. I looked at Larry, hoping he would stop his father's rude comments. But Larry said he couldn't do that and that his parents weren't doing anything wrong. It became clear he would never protect me from his parents in the future. That was the moment I realized it. I was certain of it even as the hall buzzed around us. My in-laws were drunk and continued to insult me. Well, you're already married. But if you're going to be part of this family, you need to prove that you have enough money, they said. Yes, that's right. They continued. After you register your marriage at the city hall, you should give us a few thousand a month and your entire bonus. I was shocked by their words. I never thought they would say such things at our wedding reception. I just stared at them, feeling my face go pale. My father took the microphone from them. Enough of this. Don't you realize you're making fools of yourselves? He said, though still showing some respect. His parents glared at my father. Why are you interrupting us while we're talking? 
I knew this woman's father was no good. Single parents are never any good, they said. How dare they insult my father? I thought. My father, keeping his cool, replied, You people are even worse than I imagined. You even refuse to meet me because I am a single father. I never thought that someone like you would work for President Scott. President Scott is such a respectable person. I assumed his employees would be decent as well. At that, my father-in-law's face turned very serious. How do you know President Scott? He's a business partner of my company, and more importantly, an old friend of mine, my father explained. And speaking of single parents, President Scott was raised by his mother alone. So you just insulted the president of the company you work for. Seeing my in-laws' faces fall at my father's words, I realized they finally understood the mess they had gotten themselves into. I apologize, sir. Please don't tell the president about this. My in-law pleaded, suddenly falling to his knees. Just moments before, he had acted like he was in charge, but now he looked defeated. I could hear laughter from the guests. Some even pulled out their cell phones to record the scene. No matter how much you apologize, you can't take back your words, my dad said. He walked over to me and asked if I wanted to go home with him. I said yes and took the microphone from Larry's hand. Thank you for the great entertainment, but there will be no marriage, I announced to Larry and his parents and to everyone who attended. I will make sure to return the money you gave us for this occasion. Then I left the reception hall with my dad. I caught a glimpse of Larry and his parents looking dismayed, and soon after, his relatives rushed over with worried expressions on their faces. The place must have been in complete chaos. As I returned their money, I apologized to the guests. They all expressed sympathy for me and praised me and my dad for our actions, saying it was good that we weren't taken advantage of by such terrible people. Later, Larry's co-workers, who had attended the reception, must have spread the word about what happened at his company. Larry became known for having such unreasonable parents and was criticized for having a weak character. His embarrassment was so great that he resigned voluntarily, of course. The president of my father-in-law's company found out about the incident. Larry's father was demoted and sent to an insignificant division of the company, transferred to a remote office in the countryside. I heard that Larry's family has been ostracized by all his relatives because of what happened at the wedding. While it's unfortunate, it really was their own doing, and sometimes things like that just can't be avoided. In the meantime, I've been using this opportunity to strengthen my relationship with my dad. We've been spending more quality time together, and it's helped me appreciate all he's done for me even more. One day, he sat me down for a serious talk. Linda, are you interested in running the business? he asked, looking at me with a mixture of hope and seriousness. Do you mean, I started, a bit unsure where he was heading with this. Why don't you work towards becoming the president of my company, he suggested. It was a big step, and he seemed to believe I was ready to take it on. I'll do my best, I promised him, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. I decided then to focus on stepping up my game at work rather than getting entangled in romantic relationships. For now, I wanted to prove to myself and to my dad that I could excel and perhaps one day be a great leader like him. Currently, I am deeply involved in learning everything I can of my dad's company. The work is challenging but fulfilling, and I'm determined to make the most of this opportunity. Reflecting on the wedding fasco, it's clear that Larry's in-laws were quite unreasonable, turning what should have been a beautiful event into a spectacle. Thankfully, since the marriage wasn't officially registered, I was spared from a legally binding mistake. Now free from any marital ties and with no looming in-law issues, I can focus solely on my career aspirations. It's a relief to know that out of a chaotic situation came a clear path forward for me.
I look forward to what the future holds, and I'm excited about the potential of leading the company. I wish myself all the best and hope that anyone watching this story can take something valuable from it. Thank you for staying till the end. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the story, and I hope to see you in the next video.